Hello Info Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming directly from the center of our galaxy. With this study right here being of particular interest. The study that used some of the new data available from the Gaia telescope, the incredible telescope that's been creating extremely accurate maps of all of the stars in our galaxy, collecting millions and millions of stars in the process, and in the process discovering what the scientists refer to as the heart of the Milky Way. The poor old heart to be more exact. Specifically referring to the original core of the galaxy, or I guess the skeleton of the galaxy, so maybe a skeleton would have been actually a better title, that served as the initial foundation for the formation of the Milky Way as it grew into a larger and larger object over the past 13 billion years. And that's of course a super exciting discovery, because it might give us a chance to finally answer a lot of the questions about the evolution of the Milky Way, and basically answer the question of how galaxies developed to begin with. And more importantly, it also confirms various theories and various ideas about how galaxies evolve. Because today, a lot of scientists believe that various galaxies should all host some kind of an ancient area in the center, concentrated with very old stars moving relatively slow, representing that initial core around which everything else formed afterwards. But it was pretty much impossible to confirm any of this until the recent announcements and the recent developments with the data from the Gaia telescope specifically the third recent release, with two more planned for the future, that revealed so much new data and so much more information about a lot of different objects out there. And so by using this data, the scientists wanted to focus on several specific factors. First of all, they wanted to look in the center of our own galaxy, somewhere in the vicinity of the constellation of Sagittarius, and specifically in regions like Sagittarius A, Sagittarius B, or Sagittarius C. That's what we refer to as the galactic center. And during their initial search, they were able to identify a lot of metal poor stars, indicating stars that are usually very old because they don't really contain anything except for hydrogen and helium for the most part, with the middle picture right here showing us the distribution of all of these metal poor stars discovered, with a lot of them, not surprisingly, mostly being somewhere in the center. But discovering these metal poor ancient stars was not enough, because they technically could have come from somewhere else. For example, they could have come from another galaxy that collided with the Milky Way a long time ago, introducing these stars into the center. So something else had to be used to determine if this is the core and the original heart of the galaxy. And in this case, the scientists had to also take a look at the speeds and the orbits of these stars. If a star in question was orbiting around the Milky Way relatively fast, it very likely came from somewhere else or might have actually formed on the outskirts. If it was orbiting super super slow, close to the center, it's actually very unlikely that it came from anywhere else because it just would not have the orbital velocity to do so. And so by doing a further analysis, they've discovered approximately 18,000 stars inside the galaxy, in the constellation Sagittarius, that they now believe served as the core of the original Milky Way, existing at least 12 and a half billion years ago, with all of them located within approximately 6,000 light years away from the galactic center, all of them having relatively slow orbits, and most importantly, all of them being old enough to actually predate the rest of the disk of the Milky Way. Or in other words, they all existed before any of this was formed. All of this came way way later, and was actually a result of many different collisions over time. And overall, all of these stars seem to also represent approximately 0.2% of the galaxy's total mass, implying that approximately 99.8% of the mass was acquired afterwards in the last 12 billion years. Although in this case, this was 18,000 out of approximately 2 million stars examined, so many of them have obviously not been discovered yet, and this is just an initial estimate. In the beginning, the total mass of the score and the number of the stars here was much greater. The scientists believe it was probably between 50 million to 200 million solar masses, with a huge number of these stars being very massive, eventually going supernova. And only smaller stars, less massive stars than our own sun, usually K-type stars, remained here afterwards to exist billions of years later and to be now discovered by the Gaia telescope, suggesting that only approximately half of the total mass is now missing. But in the process, this new study has also made a couple of new discoveries and new important confirmations. First of all, pretty much all of these stars more or less remained in the center of the galaxy in the core for the last 12 billion years. Or in other words, despite collisions, despite various disturbances from passing galaxies, despite all of the mass interaction, the core itself did not fall apart and the original central stars remained in their relatively close vicinity even billions of years later. 
Although it's not entirely clear if this is just true for our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which might have just experienced an extremely quiet life compared to some other galaxy, or if it's true of everything else in the universe as well. This is one mystery we cannot answer just yet. Either way though, the original core of the Milky Way seems to be for the most part kind of intact. With the second discovery being in regards to the speeds of these stars, they're much much lower in terms of orbital speed compared to other younger stars, which implies that the initial core of the Milky Way did not really have much rotational velocity. The velocity picked up afterwards with various collisions. But the real question the scientists want to answer is of course the evolution of the galaxy. What happened afterwards? How did the stars evolve and how did the galaxy evolve into what it is today? And this is where the scientists want to take this study, but this is where this other study comes in with some of the other discoveries that were just made a few weeks ago. You can also find this in the description below. In this case, they were examining the Sagittarius B1 region, the region that you can kind of see right there, where the scientists have definitively identified a very active star formation region, which contains a lot of young stars that seem to ionize the gas around them, forcing the gas to produce certain types of emissions, which then allows the scientists to see them from far away. And in this case, it confirms that there have been several different stages of star formation in our galaxy, specifically at least 2 and 7 billion years ago, but also a much more recent event, approximately 10 million years ago, that resulted in the formation of several different stars from all of the gas that seems to circulate in this region. In this case, it was at least 400,000 solar masses. But following this event, a lot of these stars then start to disperse away from the center of the galaxy, with older stars appearing farther away from the center. Which gives us a really interesting perspective on the center of the galaxy. Not only is this the core of the galaxy where everything started, but it also seems to be the region where new stars are currently being created as well, and quite a lot of stars, which then sort of spread to the outskirts of the galaxy, creating the central bulge that we see right here. Now all of this is of course just preliminary, but it definitely confirms some of the initial theories the scientists had about the star formation in these central regions and the general evolution of various galaxies such as the Milky Way. But I guess more exciting discoveries are going to be made later when the scientists re-examine these regions and start to discover what other things they can actually find here. At the moment, our understanding of the evolution of galaxies is still quite limited and is mostly based on various simulations such as the famous Illustris project that tend to create something that resembles the Milky Way, but at the same time still has some differences that we cannot explain. And so how exactly these galaxies form and what exactly happens to galaxies as they evolve is kind of the main purpose for a lot of these studies. And naturally other questions such as what kind of stars they form, do they also form planets, can life actually form there? At the moment we don't know, but we're slowly getting there. And so until future discoveries, or until the scientists find something else in the central region, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.